Hi, and welcome to the NBA show, where today we'll be discussing Michael Jordan's Charlotte Hornets. Stay tuned. For a significant period of time, the Charlotte Hornets has been looked at as one of the league's worst franchises. They haven't had a star, they haven't really had a whole lot going for them in terms of playoff success or, or even regular season success. And it's been one of those small frustrations from the fan base, like what is our general direction? Michael Jordan has spent a lot of time investing draft picks in seasoned college guys who haven't really panned out or become superstars. So what is the future in hold for the Charlotte Hornets? really. Well, first and foremost, they have a youngster in Devontae Graham. Well, youngsters may be a bit much. He's 25, but the second year guard really broke out last season, averaging over 17 points and seven assists per game. But even more than that, he hit over three threes per game. He's a shooter, he's a scorer, he's a facilitator, and that gave them a significant boost in terms of what their future outlook could be. He's paired up with Terry Rozier in the backcourt. Both of them can score the ball, both of them can create. And Terry Rozier in particular is more of a defensive oriented guard. So there is some potential in that backcourt, even though it's small. That being said, it's the rest of the team that needs a little bit of help. So at the three slash four position, we find Miles Bridges, a very athletic combo forward who can hail the ball, shoot a little bit and finish on the inside. If you put a gun to my head right now, I would argue that he's probably the one guy on the team currently with the best chance of actually breaking out as a star. But even if he doesn't, he should project as a long-term starter for the next 10 years or so. So, so far we have three players who you can build around. Well, not to the extent of a superstar, but it's three main pieces that you have that you can move forward with, which, is, which isn't nothing, it is something. And also be noteworthy is the fact that they have the third overall pick in the 2020 NBA draft. While this draft is admittedly a bit on the weak side, there is significant talent to be had. If one of Lamelo Ball or Anthony Edwards should drop to number three, that's a pick right there they could go to. Yes, they would have to make some adjustments because they already have a loaded backcourt, but that's a good problem to have because that means you can trade some pieces for additional pieces where you lack some depth maybe center. Speaking of center, Onyeka Okongwu from USC is right there, as should be James Wiseman from Memphis University. The thing is though, you don't really want to go center at the three, simply because you can actually get centers for cheap in free agency these days. Look no further than Rashawn Holmes who signed with the Kings for two years and $9.77 million. That's a bargain. What you want instead is a wing, is a, a, a legit wing. Someone who can defend or shoot or pass or do anything of those sorts. A guy like Devin Vassell will come into the NBA and be an immediate contributor as a 3 and D player. The positive is that he's got another level to him in terms of his shake and bake dribble. There is a component of him that could turn into an on-ball creator. In that case, slotting him up at the three spot alongside Graham and Rochier would give them a pretty good nucleus, especially if you slide Miles Bridges to the four. All of a sudden, you're now looking at a team that's very new agey. So if everything is not lost in terms of hope for the Charlotte Hornets, as long as they play their cards right. Now, do you take Vassell at three? Maybe that's a stretch, but what is the alternative here? Taking James Wiseman or Onyeka Okongwu, who are both centers? Yeah, you can pretty much just go into the free agency market and find a center for cheap. You'll have two guards, two forwards who are interchangeable, and then you can plug in a center. Now you'll still need a bench, and here's the hope that Malik Monk, a former number seven pick, could actually turn into something productive still. He's a scorer, he's a shooter, he's not much of a defender or an on-ball creator, but if he can come off the bench and just give you buckets, that's a huge asset. The point I'm trying to make here is, the Charlotte Hornets aren't necessarily as screwed as many people like to think they are. There is a component here that's at the very least interesting and intriguing. So maybe we should keep an eye on those just a little bit. <laughs>